Well, NASA has confirmed a mission to divert an asteroid from hurtling into Earth has been successful. The DART mission effectively shifted the asteroid's orbit, with the space agency describing it as a watershed moment. Joining us live is Dr Rebecca Allen with Swinburne University of Technology's Centre for Astrophysics and Supercomputing. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Firstly, just take us through how NASA assessed this. What metrics did they actually use to determine that the mission was a success? Look, that's a great question because out in space, it can be hard to understand what effect you're having on things, which is why they chose an asteroid system. So Dimorphos, the target of the DART mission, the impact in that image you see there, is a smaller asteroid that's actually orbiting Didymos, a much larger body. And so because it was so close to this larger asteroid, once the, the DART spacecraft made impact, we could see this beautiful debris trail, which we then got images of from Earth and also from the Hubble Space Telescope. And so over a period of hours and days and now a couple weeks, um, scientists have been able to measure exactly how much the little smaller body's orbit was changed. So what happens next? I assume NASA will now be monitoring that asteroid for a while and want to watch its behavior from here. Yes, yeah, so that's right. So we will continue to monitor the asteroid, which is over 10 million kilometers away from Earth, as long as we can. So because it is a smaller asteroid, you know, we're really reliant on it being close to that larger, brighter asteroid to be able to track the brightness over time. And so this is really how we learn everything we know about asteroids and what's called their period. So how quickly that smaller asteroids rotating the bigger one, rotating around the bigger one, and how long it's taking that system to orbit around the sun or have a year, so to speak. So we'll continue to watch it as long as we can to gain as much information about how much energy was transferred when that small spacecraft crashed into the asteroid going over 20,000 kilometers an hour. So you mentioned that this is on the smaller side when it comes to asteroids, but what sort of damage would that size asteroid cause if it did actually make impact with Earth? Well, that's exactly why NASA targeted this asteroid. So it's just under 200 meters in size. So think a very, very tall building um, or even, you know, the pyramids. And so what would happen is that depending on the type of asteroid and the speed that it's going, it would be very catastrophic, especially if it were to impact uh, in a populated area. So think, you know, definitely devastating to a city the size of Melbourne or Sydney. And so really bad regional damage. And because this class of asteroid is in this kind of 200 meter range, we really only know about less than half of them that we think are in existence. So we think there's probably tens of thousands of asteroids in this class, yet we only know about less than half of them. So it's really important to us to be able to say, okay, if we were to discover one and it is on a trajectory where it could impact you know, a populated city on Earth, would we be able to divert it? And so because of this critical test that NASA's done, we know that we've been able to have an, an influence on that asteroid's motion. So Dr. Allen, how much more notice would we actually get if an asteroid was heading our way? How quickly uh, do they move? Look, that's that's the magic question. So these asteroids are are moving extremely fast through space. So in order for the DART um, spacecraft to make impact, it had to be going, you know, at a relative speed to that asteroid. So think tens of thousands of kilometers per hour. So over, you know, 50 times faster than the fastest car can go. And so they're really traveling very quickly through space. And because of their size, and, and they might be made out of a material that doesn't reflect a lot of sunlight, they can be very challenging to find. Now, this system was actually discovered decades ago in the 90s, which gave us plenty of time to be able to track its orbit and understand it. Now, some uh, other asteroids that could be a bit darker and harder to find, that means that you know, we could find them and it could be a matter of months before they have what's called a close approach to Earth. So now that we know that this type of system or this type of mission um, is successful, I think it's now, like you said, it's down to that critical time frame. Well, if we discover something which we think could be potentially hazardous, just how quickly can we get this type of mission off the ground? And will NASA now look at targeting a, a larger asteroid? Do they have plans for future asteroid interventions? 
Uh, that's another great question. So larger asteroids are a bit easier to detect and track. And so we believe we found pretty much all of the ones which would be kind of the dinosaur level impact event. And we're not too worried about any of those. So it's really focusing on these smaller class asteroids. So I think if anything, we might see a similar mission to what happened with Dimorphos because now it's thinking about, okay, we know what one vending machine size spacecraft can do to an object this size. What about a larger spacecraft or a fleet of small spacecraft. And so this is where NASA might get creative um, in looking at, and, and other space organizations across the world might get creative at looking at different types of spacecrafts traveling at different velocities um, or speeds to understand just how we can change the impacts and the rotation um, of the asteroid. Dr. Rebecca Allen, it is fascinating stuff. We really appreciate your analysis. Thank you so much. You're welcome.